Casino Jizzle had been grinding it out in the Memphis rap scene for years, but he still had one foot in the trenches and on the 4th of July, he was killed in broad daylight. This is the crazy story of how it all went down. Casino Jizzle came up on the east side of Memphis. Not much is known about his early life, but he told Dirty Glove Bastard that he jumped off the porch around 13 years old and got active in the streets. Growing up in the wild streets of Memphis, Jizzle became a product of his environment. A lot of kids who come up in the streets have OGs who will show them how to move and not make all the same mistakes they did. But Jizzle said him and his homies always did their own thing and didn't have anyone to show them the ropes. Jizzle was affiliated with the crew called Four Way The Mob. Back then, he was already rapping, but it took a while for him to really go hard. His older brother always wanted to become a rapper too, but Jizzle said Don Tripp is the dude who really inspired him to hop in the booth. Tripp is a legend in the underground Memphis scene, and between 2010 and 2011, he went on an insane run of mixtapes and dropped nine projects in two years. He never really broke out into the mainstream, but a lot of Memphis rappers were inspired by Tripp, and Jizzle eventually got the chance to link up with him in the studio. Right before Jizzle graduated high school, he realized that he wanted to go hard with rap, but at the same time, he was still deep in the trenches. And in 2016, he almost got sent away for life. In October 2015, a party was going down at Tennessee State University. Casino Jizzle was there, and at some point, he started shooting dice with a bunch of other people in a courtyard on campus. It's not clear exactly how everything went down, but a fight broke out over the game, and that's when someone started letting off shots. A 19-year-old from Memphis named Cameron Selman was killed and three TSU students got hit up while they were just walking across campus. The police didn't have any leads for a long time, but in August 2016, they finally caught a break in the case and booked Casino Jizzle and a dude named Christopher Gatewood on charges for first-degree murder, attempted second-degree murder, assault, and reckless endangerment. Jizzle was only 20 years old at the time, but he was facing a life sentence if he got convicted. The police said him and Gatewood ran back to Memphis after they killed Cameron Selman, but Jizzle got booked when he went to see the parole officer he had for a different felony conviction. Nobody knows why this happened, but Jizzle caught a big break after a witness from the shooting withdrew her statements and the charges were dropped. By 2019, Jizzle was building a lot of buzz with his name in Memphis. He was racking up hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, and in August of that year, he dropped the track four times for real and was really popping off. It's not easy for an underground artist with no label backing them to hit a million views, but Four Time For Real hit over 2 million views on YouTube and proved that Casino Jizzle could be the next hot rapper out of Memphis. But just a couple of months after hitting his biggest numbers yet, Jizzle was almost killed at a Chuck E. Cheese. In December 2019, Jizzle was at a local Chuck E. Cheese in Memphis with his girl and her kids. They were all chilling inside and Jizzle went outside to get something from his car. Most people would never expect a shooting to go down at Chuck E. Cheese, but a couple minutes later, Jizzle walked back in, bleeding from a gunshot wound to the chest. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, and that's when the cops found out it wasn't even the first time someone tried to take him out that year. A few months before the Chuck E. Cheese shooting, the ops allegedly slid through Jizzle's hood and did a drive-by on his house. Nobody ever got booked for the shooting, but Jizzle's sister told the cops that he was the one they were trying to hit. While he was in the hospital, Jizzle's manager said that he was trying to leave the streets behind and that some major labels interested. And Jizzle wasn't just trying to blow up and leave everyone behind. He started his own label and wanted to put everyone on. His plan was to kick down the industry doors and let his homies in too. Jizzle was all about giving back to the community. Just four days before he was shot at the Chuck E. Cheese, he was handing out Thanksgiving meals to people in the community who couldn't afford to buy their own. Luckily, he made a full recovery from the shooting and hopped straight back in the booth. He picked up a lot more momentum from the track We The Ops, and Asian Doll liked it so much that she hopped on the remix and gave him even more shine. Jizzle dropped his debut album in 2021 and was planning on releasing the second one later this week. But just three days before it came out, Jizzle was tragically killed on the 4th of July. It's not clear exactly how it went down yet, but at around 6.30 p.m., someone shot and killed Casino Jizzle. The shooter sped off after they murdered him, and the cops put out a warrant for a dude named Michael Clayton. It seemed like Jizzle was really trying to make it in the industry and leave all the street drama behind him. He told Dirty Glove Bastard that becoming a dad changed everything and that there was nothing more important to him, and now it's tragic that he won't be around to raise his child. Jizzle had offers from major labels and was trying to make his own lane, but unfortunately, he didn't make it out of Memphis before the streets caught up to him.